Hey everybody, Dear Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Code Realize Guardian of Rebirth. We had to stop the last episode in the middle of some really exciting events because things were just running too long and I had no idea when there could have been a break. So now we are we're doing a bounty hunting job trying to catch this child vampire so that people don't kill him. Uh, so that St. Germain will give us some money. <laughs> well, lend us some money. So, let's get started. Uh, go ahead and sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Uh, wait, Van Helsing. I try to follow him, but Lupin grabs me by the hand. Hold on, calm down. That little guy's too fast for us. We'll never catch up to him. And, that's very unlike Van Helsing. He doesn't usually get that heated. I wonder what got into him. Aren't we going after him? Don't worry. Even though he's got an attitude, he's one of us. We won't desert him. Let's go ahead of them and wait. C can we really get ahead of them? We don't even know which way they went. Leave it to me. Have faith in Arsene Lupin, first-class gentleman thief. Lupin starts running and we follow him out of the tent in a rush. We leave the auction venue. Soon we arrive at a nearby forest where we had met Van Helsing for the first time. H hey Lupin! What makes you think they came this way? It's like you just ran off in a random direction. Well, they've got to be here. It seems that kid was working alone. No matter how strong you are, it's impossible to outrun a large organization like the London Firm. He'll try to hide somewhere for sure, and this forest is the most accessible hiding place around. I've come here before, too. I see. You're thinking about it from the perspective of a criminal. Very impressive, and worthy of a gentleman thief. Yep, huh? I hear footsteps. They're close. We're almost on top of them. Lupin speeds up, and we do our best to keep up with him. We must break through the bushes into a clearing. The boy from before is standing there, dumbfounded. What's this? Did you follow me here? I'm surprised that there are humans capable of keeping up with me. Still, I'm not giving back the pendant, and I won't let you capture me either. We look at each other. If it belongs to your father, then we have no business trying to take it away from you. And it doesn't sit right with us to hand you over to the London firm. Then why have you followed me? If you don't want the pendant back and you don't want to catch me. I don't see what the point is. We'd like you to turn yourself in. Not to the London firm, of course. We know someone in the yard who can be trusted. You can explain the situation to him and be handled appropriately there. It's not your place to decide. Humans are all the same to me. Stand in my way and I won't hold back. Just as Van Helsing said, it's impossible to tell what he'll do. That expression of hatred. He might harm someone else later on. But from how he fought earlier, we don't stand a chance against him. Lupin, I have an idea. Let's... Let's try to persuade him. I don't think capturing him would go too well. I take a step forward. There's no way we're going to stop him if we try using force. That leaves only... Don't worry. We're not going to hurt you. We're on your side. I have very little reason to believe that human. You're just likely after the reward. If you murder a human and taint your hands with blood, as you said you will, then we won't hesitate to capture you. However, if you're still undecided, I have a suggestion. Why don't you come back to the mansion for a nice cup of tea? You might be able to make a better decision once you've calmed down. My mind is already clear. I politely decline your offer. The boy shakes his head and takes a fighting stance. Suddenly, we hear footsteps from behind. I turn around to see Van Helsing. You caught up. Van Helsing says nothing, glaring silently at the boy before us. 
You! It's been a while, son of the dragon. I left that name behind. I've taken on the name of my father. I see. So do you want me to call you Delacroix the Second instead of Dracula? Do these two know each other? I'm about to ask when... In an instant, Delacroix slides in close to Van Helsing and swings a fist. Van Helsing blocks the punch with his gun. But the force of the impact causes him to jump back to avoid falling over. How dare you! How dare you show yourself in front of me! Have you no shame? Keep going this way and you'll fall into the darkness, just like me. You have no right to talk, Van Helsing! The attack is intense. The boy throws a storm of punches, too fast for the human eye, but Van Helsing calmly blocks them. I'll kill you! I swear it! Unfortunately, I can't die quite yet. Van Helsing swings his gun, but De La Croix jumps back to avoid the strike. The two glare at each other, and there's no room for anyone to intervene. But... I found them! Over here! We hear the other bounty hunters closing in. They finally caught up. De La Croix looks away for a moment. Van Helsing! I'll wait for you at the place where you murdered my father. If you don't come, I'll hunt you down and kill you, and every last person who is important to you. The same goes for the rest of you. Everyone! His eyes are full of murderous intent. When he glares at me, I can't help myself from taking a few steps backward. Our paths have crossed for too long. We shall bring an end to this. With that, he disappears into the night, before anyone can do anything to stop him. All that remains is the angry shouting of the men searching for him, and our own confusion. Several hours later, we have returned to the mansion. De La Croix disappeared into the forest without being captured. The auction organizers placed an even greater bounty on him, and the greedy hunters hooted and shouted in excitement. Once we came back to the mansion, Van Helsing announced that he needed some fresh air and went outside. It's already midnight, but nobody seems to want to retire to their own room yet. I'm sure we're all thinking the same thing. What did Van Helsing do in the past? Did he murder that boy's father? If so, why did he do such a thing? There are so many questions, but I can't quite tell if it's my place to ask him outright. The silence is finally broken by the Count. We must come to a decision. What? Confront him directly and urge him to change his mind, or make sure that he doesn't harm us in the future. The latter opinion is probably a genteel way of suggesting that we kill him. I assume as much, but can't bring myself to ask for clarification. Well, that's easy for you to say, but he's just a kid, you know? I can't bring myself to fight him. Me too. And he seemed to have his reasons for doing what he did. You're right, but De La Croix came right out and said he would kill us. And we need to think of something. Yeah. Either way, we can't just stand around and wait to be killed. Let's try finding his lair tomorrow. Lair? Do you mean the place the boy spoke of regarding his encounter with Van Helsing? I'm fine with heading over there, but where is it? Isn't Van Helsing the only one who would know? Yes, and this is Van Helsing's personal problem. Do you think he would willingly let us accompany him? That's entirely up to him. If he says no, then that's that. In any case, let's call it quits for today. Whatever we decide to do, we need to rest before we can do it. Lupin is the first to leave the room. Impy, St. Germain, and Victor eventually all head up to their own rooms. As for me, for some reason I don't want to go to bed just yet, so I remain in my chair. I wonder how long I've been sitting here. I sit in the quiet, 
deserted lounge with my eyes closed. I hear a noise and raise my head to see Victor standing at the open door. Hey, you're pretty late. Aren't you going to bed? So many thoughts keep coming in my mind, so I can't sleep. How about you? I'm... it's the same for me. I was thinking about Van Helsing and that kid. De La Croix? Yes. I looked into the incidents he's caused up until now. Every object he's targeted was originally part of the royal vampire's family fortune. What? That means he wasn't stealing. He was taking back the stolen vamp vampire fortune and the mementos of his people. Stand aside, fools! I'm here to reclaim that which is rightfully mine! Is that true? Van Helsing probably... I'm sure he knows what's going on. There's nobody who knows about the extermination of the vampires better than him. Victor, do you know Van Helsing well? No, only what's on the surface. He was a hero in the Vampire War two years ago. It's said that his actions brought the Vampire War to an end quickly, and the army only suffered a few losses. He raided the lair of the vampires who were threatening humanity and killed the Vampire King, Der Lacroix, along with his entire clan. That pretty much ended the war, aside from hunting down stragglers. Was all that necessary? Victor slowly shakes his head. We were all told that vampires were trying to wipe out humanity. I don't know for myself how much of that is actually true. I can say one thing for sure. War is nothing but formalized murder. It has no justice. I notice Victor's hands are clenched tightly into fists. Victor, what's the matter? Uh, it's just that... I was a royal alchemist, understand? The war feels very personal to me. Victor's tone makes me feel like he's avoiding the truth. But, I don't think Van Helsing is so cold that he can casually kill someone. I think that those heroic actions he's been praised for are far from the truth. Yes, I think so too. Sorry for keeping you waiting so long. I'm going to bed now. You should do the same. Thanks. Victor smiles and gives me a little wave as he leaves. I still can't sleep, though, and so I head outside the mansion. I have only one reason for doing so. I saw Van Helsing through the window and couldn't help but come out after him. I wonder where he went. I know I saw him right here. I feel that I can see him. The thoughts that stir up my emotions, like Van Helsing's past and De La Croix II's hateful gaze, will somehow be soothed. Oh, I find him. He doesn't seem to be doing anything, just standing there deep in thought. I'm about to call out to him, but then I see that somehow sorrowful state he is in, and hesitate. Hmm, hmm. oh, it's you. What are you doing at this time of night? Van Helsing notices me before I can make up my mind to speak. I was... I'm gonna ask. Whoops, darn it. Skip the line. I want to ask you something personal. I can't stop thinking about it. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. That boy, De La Croix II, did you kill his father? Van Helsing falls silent for a while. For some reason, the silence begins to frighten me. Yes. It's true, I killed him. I don't know Van Helsing very well, but... That simple admission eloquently conveyed the immense weight he bears on his chest. I see. It's the undeniable truth. I took that boy's father away from him. His words are stern, distant. He's telling me the complete unabridged truth, but he doesn't look my way at all. It almost feels like he is telling me that I have no business asking this about him. It's late. Go to bed and rest up. He turns his back to the mansion as he says this. I can't respond to him at all, and merely watch him as he walks away.
When I enter my room, Cece comes up to me, wagging his tail. Oh, I'm sorry, Cece. That's right, we always sleep together. Were you worried about me? Everything's fine. Let's go to bed. Cece hops up on the bed and curls up. I feel the weight of his small body by my feet and close my eyes. Van Helsing, De La Coy II, my father, and me. I think about all kinds of things, but the conclusion I ultimately arrive at is... Simply, everyone probably lives under the burden of all the different events in their pasts. I... What burden am I carrying? It's with this thought that I gradually fall asleep. The next day... The train slowly leaves the station. We are headed for the place where De La Croix II is waiting for us. According to Van Helsing, it is far to the north of London, all the way in Scotland. It's at least one whole day's journey away. In the end, we all decided that we would travel there together. Van Helsing had no objection to our request to accompany him. Van Helsing and De La Croix II, do they mean to continue fighting until one of them falls? One having lost his family, the other having taken it away, even if this is the path they've chosen for themselves. All I can think about is whether there is a way to avoid Van Helsing's death, and the death of De La Croix II. The weather doesn't look very good. It appears we might be in for some rain. I look outside the window. Ominous gray clouds cover the sky. It feels like a foreshadowing of the events to come, and I avert my eyes from them. From that point until we arrive, no one says much, and we spend our time either looking out the window or reading. The boy's father died during the Vampire War. He says that Van Helsing killed him. Is something wrong? Without realizing it, I had been staring at Van Helsing. Oh yes, it seems like you haven't slept much, so I was wondering if you're alright. I see. I'm fine. You should follow the example of the others, and get some rest. With those few words, the conversation comes to an end. I wonder what he's thinking about right now. We are all deep within a forest. We arrive at the right station at dawn, but there is still a long journey ahead. It's already sunset. The sun is going to set soon. Are we almost at the place you're heading for? Just a little further. We walk through the woods in silence. Van Helsing. Silence. But I don't back down and keep talking. What are you going to do to that boy? If the only options are to kill or be killed, what did he come here to do? Who can say? He doesn't give a clear answer and starts walking even faster. We walk for two more hours. That is some serious mist. The scenery suddenly opens up around us and the trees are replaced by a tall building. Whoa! This is pretty amazing! Wow, it's a huge mansion. It looks old. The history of the vampire race is long, and they have lived in a number of regions. This is most likely one of their bases. I don't know how to put it. It's huge and amazing, but it has a melancholy feel about it. Now that he mentions it, the castle does have a certain sadness. Is that boy waiting for us, all by himself in that mansion that used to stand with such dignity in the past? Let's go. Van Helsing sets off, and we follow. Our footsteps echo in the hall. While the interior is in disrepair, it's not as bad as the decrepit exterior. Yeah, it's hard to believe how run down this place is. 
Impy says this in a soft voice, sounding sadder than I expected. I turn around. Impy, have you been here before? Yeah. Nope, I've never been here, but there's just something about it. Impy, you were questioning why De La Croix II was so strong. Uh, uh, huh? Oh yeah, I guess. I mean, he's a vampire, but he's still just a kid. Anyone would think it's strange. I'll clear it up for you. De La Croix II is a pure blood. Pure blood? The vampire race were very reclusive, but humans, after all, are the ones who determine the state of the world. Because vampires are so similar in nature to them, they could not remain completely detached from human society. As time passed, a group of vampires deepened their relationship with humans, and their blood began to mix. I see. I suppose love knows no boundaries, even species. Huh. Call it whatever you like. As their relations with humans grew stronger, those who were against it became a minority within the overall population. There are those who simply detested humans, or cited vampiric pride. The reasons varied, but all of them possessed the incredible physical abilities that vampires originally had. I see. So the reason the kid is so strong is because he has no human blood in him. Which means that last night was probably the norm in the past. Vampires used to be a source of fear for humans. I can see why. But ultimately, those who chose not to mingle with humans naturally disappeared. Source of fear, huh? Van Helsing continues speaking as he walks. He's close. He'll be at the place where I murdered the Vampire King de la Croix. We suddenly enter an open space, a large room the size of a great hall. I see wide, luxurious staircases and elaborate chandeliers. Although everything looks worn out now, their presence speaks of the past splendor of the mansion. And then... I've been waiting for you, Van Helsing! Standing at the center of the stairs is the pure-blood vampire, as if he had been waiting the whole time. I shall have your head in this place, where my father spent his last moments. We all tense up at these hateful words. However, without hesitation, Van Helsing steps forward without even drawing his guns. Van Helsing! Stand back and watch. Whoa, whoa! Are you sure you don't need our help? This is my problem to deal with. You can all stay back here. Paul, oh, so you came with a retinue but don't seek their help. I don't care if you all attack me at once. It's just a matter of having more dead bodies to clean up afterwards. Do you enjoy talking, De La Croix? Do you fear me? Why don't you go ahead and kill me, if you hate me that much? That is, if you can. In the tense atmosphere, the air surrounding the boy seems to swirl. Very well! He brushes his cape back and raises his fists. Don't think I'm the same as before. I've been training endlessly for the sole purpose of ending your life. My father's regret, my mother's misery, and my people's anger will all be avenged here and now. Here I come, Van Helsing! His speed enables him to close the ten steps between them in an instant. As we expected, De La Croix... The second's physical abilities are extraordinary. Do you take me for a fool? You don't even have your guns out! Van Helsing takes every one of the boy's punches without so much as a change in his expression. What's the matter? Aren't you going to fight back? You! How far must your mockery go? Van Helsing brushes aside an unending stream of punches and kicks, doing nothing but fighting defensively. But, how was Van Helsing able to block these attacks so easily? 
From what I saw at the auction, the child's fists hold a tremendous amount of power. Is it really possible to take this many blows, even though they may not all be direct hits? He isn't taking the force of his foe's attacks head on. The Count speaks as if reading my mind. The hits aren't hitting him directly, and he's able to skillfully avert them to different directions to lessen the impact. But, that method of fighting is probably something only Van Helsing can do. No normal person would be able to react to De La Croix's attacks in this way. His reputation as the human weapon is earned. Does that mean both of them are superhuman beings above the range of what's considered normal? I suddenly recall my past of being called a monster and being hated. For some reason, this scene before me of two people fighting for their lives looks sad to me. Are you sure he doesn't need help? There's probably no need. But... We're not going to abandon him, just... It's not what Van Helsing wants, and I'm sure he has some sort of plan. If we think he's in dire danger, we'll go in and help, and we won't take no for an answer. Until then, we should stay out. Just like Van Helsing says, this is probably something he needs to tackle on his own. Something he needs to do himself. Don't worry, Van Helsing is strong and I believe he has a good heart. He'll figure out a way. Okay. I nod hesitantly at Victor's point. As we watch the fighting progress, it all changes suddenly. Ugh! Van Helsing sinks his fist into the boy's abdomen. Van Helsing wastes no opportunity when his opponent loses his balance and delivers a blow to De La Croix's head with his elbow. The boy jumps back in defense, however... By that time, Van Helsing has his two shotguns out and already pointed at De La Croix. Move, and I'll shoot. The tables have completely turned from his defensive fighting earlier. The hunter and the hunted. A tense silence fills the space between them. So, I can easily avoid anything you try to shoot at me. Would you like to try it? If you do, it will cost you your life. You yourself already understand. You are far weaker than your late father. You cannot defeat me. Then shoot! I only seek your surrender. I had no intention of harming you from the start. What? What is the meaning of this? You would show me mercy now that it's far too late? I'm warning you, don't move. Then why didn't you show us this mercy two years ago? I don't want to shoot you. You... If it wasn't for you... Mother and father would still be alive! The boy leaps forward. I gulp at the dull boom of the gunshot. De La Croix is rolling on the floor, as if he'd been thrown back. I warned you. Not a single drop of blood stains his clothes. Instead, there are white shards. Immediately I realize what they are. Rock salt. Van Helsing had had no intention of killing the boy from the very beginning. I... I'll kill you! Even after being shot, De La Croix stands up. Van Helsing fires another shotgun blast, and the vampire falls to the ground. I will destroy you and everything you hold dear! Even then, De La Croix tries to stand up once again. Ah! De La Croix screams as the gunshots continue. Stay down. I will get my revenge, no matter what. I will never forgive you for betraying my parents' kindness. Ah! Ah! His body is blown away like an old rag and rolls across the floor. Van Helsing. That's enough, Van Helsing. It seems like 
De La Croix has finally lost the strength to withstand any more gunshots and has stopped moving. Uh, uh. His face is twisted in pain. It should be clear that you're no match for me, De La Croix the Second. There's no way you can defeat me with your capabilities. And, stop stealing treasures. Humans can be more cruel than you can imagine. If you don't stay on your toes, you're going to be consumed someday. Give up trying to take your revenge out on the entire human race. I will never forgive you, Van Helsing. Not you. Not ever. Yes, I'm the only one deserving your ire. Van Helsing stands and looks down at the boy for a long time. But you can't kill me just yet. There's something that I must do. But once it's all over, I'll gladly give myself to you to be killed. I deserve that much. Van Helsing. De La Croix the Second, my death must put an end to your quest for revenge. Don't turn your hate on anyone else. De La Croix slowly rises to his knees, shaking. He apparently has no more strength to resist, and Van Helsing lowers his gun. What? What is the meaning of this? Are you trying to atone for your crime? I will not let it happen. You can't hold out a helping hand and pretend you're good. Just kill me! I could never face mother and father knowing that I had accepted your sympathy. I don't need to kill you. Kill me! Kill me! The boy crumples to the ground. For a while, his crying is the only thing to break the silence within the hall. Outside, thunder roars in the distance, dully echoing through the house. I don't know the truth behind the war two years ago, or what the war was really like. I only have knowledge from books I've read. I don't understand war very well. But to me, De La Croix II and Van Helsing both look like victims carrying the weight of their sadness from those events. A huge mansion has gone to ruin. He was probably living here all alone for the past two years, just like I had been in Wales. No, his pain is far greater than mine. A hatred that he can't do anything about, and an anger that burns through him. His suffering must have been immense. Um, I speak hesitantly. Do you think we could possibly bring him back with us? Him? You mean De La Croix? What? Cardia? Wouldn't you say that's impossible? The kid's been saying he wants to kill us. It never even crossed my mind as an option. I've got to say, I'm against it. I can't agree to it either. His presence puts us all in too much of a risk to be acceptable. As I'd expected, everyone disagrees. I could tell that De La Croix, leaning on the staircase to support himself, was quietly looking at me. Cardia, why would you want to do that? You must have a reason. Now that Lupin's asked, I start to explain my reasons little by little. I think it must be very lonely for him to stay here all by himself. I think that's very sad. At first I didn't realize it, because being alone seemed so natural to me. But now that I look back, the years I was alone were very painful and trying time in my life. I try to explain myself, but the words just start coming out and I get frustrated. I think there are a lot of things you won't see or understand, not as long as he remains here. That's why... That's why I want you to come with us. I think things will start to look different to you with a change of scenery. Does that sound crazy? Cardia? Yes, that certainly does sound outlandish. De La Croix suddenly starts talking. Why are you so desperate to help me? You don't even know me, so why would you say such things like that as if you cared? His gaze is sharp, 
searching for answers. I looked directly back at him, staring into his eyes. My life has not been as difficult as yours, but I know a little bit about loneliness. That's why I want to try and do something about that. Even though it's a dangerous situation, I also know the pain of losing parents. He remained silent for a long time. So, you presume to know how I feel, and now you're trying to save me? <laughs> Your opinions are worthless. I'm sorry. De La Croix takes a breath, then looks around the hall before turning to me again. This place is the mausoleum of my people, my family. A tomb needs a keeper. I cannot leave this place behind. Isn't revenge your only desire? Van Helsing suddenly speaks up. Then, for the sake of those who rest here, you must keep an eye on me. So that when all is said and done, I won't just change my mind and take off. Kill me some day, then you can return here, with that act as your memorial to them. Can I trust you, Van Helsing? Yes, I don't believe that something as small as this will atone for my crime. But, right now, that's as much as I can offer you. Van Helsing falls silent. De La Croix doesn't say anything either, and simply stares at him. There is a long silence. Finally, a soft voice. Fine, I'll come with you. Elsewhere, Venice stares up at the ceiling of St. Paul's Cathedral. The moonlight is tinted by the stained glass windows, spraying colored light across the floor. Aha! Uh -huh. He can't help but smile. The magnificence and beauty that his father Isaac Beckford so loved brings him peace of mind. When he is here, in this place, he feels like he is communing with his father. He hears footsteps from behind and turns around to find Alistair. Finnis, it seems there's a report concerning the location of what you've been searching for. I see. It took them quite a while this time. After the train incident and all, I'm starting to think Twilight is understaffed. You can be sarcastic if you wish, but that won't get you any results. Sarcasm? Come now, Alistair. I trust you. You make an amazing lackey. That's what I'm talking about right there. So, where are they? R reports say, somewhere in London. Which means they pretty much don't have a clue where they are. I take back what I said about you being an amazing subordinate. I say what you like. Granted, they have a master escape artist on their side, but it does seem something more is opposing us. Alistair strokes his beard and takes a deep breath before continuing. We're doing our best to find them. Don't be so hard on us. I don't need excuses. I need you to pull out all the stops in your search. We're at the final preparations for our plan. As you wish. I must excuse myself. I have an early lecture at the university tomorrow. Oh, Alistair. There's one more thing I need to ask you. Alistair, who has already turned to walk away, stops and looks back. What is it? Back on the train, you intentionally let Van Helsing live, didn't you? You could have killed him if you wanted. Why didn't you? Was it because he was your apprentice when you were a member of Twilight? I didn't think that a genius like you would let a potential source of future trouble off the hook in that situation. <laughs> well, well. I didn't think you thought so highly of me. The reason, though, is quite simple. I was taken aback by that ball of fireworks. When I looked back, he was already gone. That's all there is to it. Oh, really? Is my explanation unsatisfying? <laughs> Fine, if you say so. I must say, it's a bit of a relief to find out that you're not completely heartless. But remember this, I rarely give out second chances, and I never give out thirds. Right, I'll make sure not to forget that. Alistair bows slightly, then melts into the darkness and disappears. 
<laughs> he is in a good mood, so much that he doesn't even mind Alistair's blunder. Soon he can see his sister and become one with her. That was his father's very wish. He will carry out his father's will. Watch me, father. <laughs> His laughter echoes eerily throughout the acoustics of the cathedral. Chapter 6 Negotiated Solution Alright, so that is where we are going to end this video for today. And we shall continue this in the next video. I hope to see you in some of my future videos, perhaps that next one. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and uh, I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Derilly signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.